Well, hello everyone, whether you're watching live or later. I guess it's all later now, isn't it, Rick? Because it's, it's all, all later. Everything's later. Yeah, exactly. This is Tuesdays with Rick and Rusty. Uh, I'm Rusty George. This is the award-winning uh, quarterback. I'm sorry, journalist. Uh, Rick Garcia. Uh, <laughs> so we walk in. Absolutely. Rick, uh, tell us about your Mother's Day. How was it? Rusty, we had a great uh, we had a great Mother's Day. Um, I did everything I could uh, to prevent my wife from doing any kind of work. And at one point, I had to scold her because she just wanted to do something, I don't know, laundry or whatever it was. And I said, "Listen, I know it's your day, and it is Mother's Day, but my Mother's Day is going to be miserable if you keep doing errands and keep you know uh, doing chores." So. <laughs> Well, it comes back to bite you, doesn't it? But, yeah, you can't win or lose in that case. And, no, no. But we had a wonderful, oh, I will say our, our food order, because we d I decided to order something. I wanted to have a, a nice dinner, and I, the option was I eat the barbecue, or uh, we'd have a, a nice meal that we would do takeout. And um, so we thought it'd be nice to do takeout. And then my, I was supposed to pick it up at 5 o'clock. I won't mention the place, uh, but uh, we were supposed to pick it up at 5 o'clock. I get a call at 4.45. Your order did not go through. Your order has been canceled. Oh, no. I said, you know, you realize it's Mother's Day. And they said, yeah, we're, we're all out of fish. And my wife wanted a special meal that they had offered. Uh, and it took a long time to get it all sorted out and, and figured out. But we did, and we, we wound up having a real nice Mother's Day. How about you guys? Wow, that's great. Yeah, we, uh, we had a great day. Um, obviously, church in the morning. Sunday's kind of a, it's always been a work day for me, but we're home, so I get to watch church with the family at, at the 10 o'clock service, your service of choice. Uh, and then I hop back on the chat rooms with everybody and uh, a couple meetings. And then um, that uh, evening, I cooked. So uh, made a uh, Mother's Day meal. And uh, we watched, you'll love this, Rick, because we talked about this a few weeks ago. We watched the movie. What Lies Beneath. Uh, not necessarily a Mother's Day movie, but it was fun. We had a great time watching the kids jump all the time. Oh, a lot of, a lot of jump scares in that, and a good good thriller. I mean, that's a good way to describe it. It is. It is. It's not your typical horror movie. It's just suspenseful and, and fun. So the kids were able to sleep last night, so I consider that a win. Well, that is good news. And uh, I, I, I saw something that was a few years old and I have to try to remember what it was. For us, the movie was School of Rock that we, we did as a family. My wife had not seen that. The yeah. kids had only seen bits and pieces of it. And uh, That's a good one. That was a, that was a fun one. Um, so uh, for the folks who, who may be tuning into this for the first time, this uh, lunch, with, or it's now Tuesdays with, with uh, Rick and Rusty, was pretty much born out of boredom. I mean, we were, <laughs> you, you and I was. were both bored and we thought, you know what? Everybody else must be bored just like, just like the two of us. Correct. So we thought we would, would do our, our part to try to, uh, to entertain folks a little bit during this, uh, this time of, uh, of um, self-isolation, I guess you could call it. And so right. a combination of sports, uh, pop culture, uh, faith, and, uh, and so we're going to get in a little bit of each. And if you're ready, Louis, let you, let's talk about sports because there could be something around the corner for all of us. Uh, it was announced pretty much in the final days of last week that most of the major sports now have come up with plans to restart their seasons. We talked a little bit about this on Monday. Baseball is hoping to get uh, things rolling by the end of June with possible games by July. Uh, made, uh, that's for baseball. The NFL now has told all of its teams to have a safety protocol in place by this week so that they can discuss getting training camps opening open and their exhibition games don't start till August. So they have time. And the NBA may be the first of those three sports uh, with uh, activities possibly starting as soon as this week, including possibly today for the Orlando Magic would be possibly one of the first teams to open their facilities so that the players could start working out. Uh, now, I want to point out before I ask you this first question, Rusty, that that uh, golf has already announced it's going to start up in June with a tournament in Fort Worth. And NASCAR is going to make a return this weekend in uh, South Carolina. Now, all of these activities would be without fans. My question for you is of those, of, of those three majors, the NBA, baseball, and football, which one are you the most anxious to see? Well, clearly the NBA, uh, because I love the NBA. Uh, our Lakers were doing really well. 
And I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I assume they're not just going to call it as far as a regular season being done and start playoffs, because I know there's still some teams jockeying for position and they want to they want to give some teams a chance to finish out. But I can't imagine they're going to squeeze in the entire rest of the season, which I think was another 20 some games uh, to be able to finish it out. So I'm very excited about that. I hope they do that quickly. I don't care if there's fans in the stand. I don't care if it's all in Las Vegas or Disneyland. I just want to see players compete and, and have something to watch. Okay, so that, that leads me into my next question. Uh, Frank Vogel, coach of the Lakers, was uh, uh, during an interview, mentioned the fact that he's okay if there's going to be staggered starts because the, none of these teams can open up uh, activities unless their states and local regulations allow for that. Thus, the Orlando Magic opening in Florida, they've loosened their stay-at-home uh, restrictions. The Lakers in, in, in Los Angeles and L.A. County in California, the little further behind the curve. They're, they've still, still sort of hit their peak as far as infection rate, mortality rate, that sort of thing. And so, so the curve is, is not quite, it hasn't started to kind of come this way. Uh, so they would probably have to open later. Frank Vogel says he's okay with that, which sounds like a coach who's got a veteran team and a veteran leader like LeBron James. In the NFL, Coach Mike Tomlin, doesn't like the idea of the staggered starts. He thinks it gives an unfair advantage to the teams that get to start earlier. What do you think about that? Well, I think they're both right. Uh, I think that, I think you nailed it, it, whether it's a rookie team or a veteran team. I remember our friend uh, uh, Mike Penberthy talking about being in the locker room under a Phil Jackson coach team, and Jackson would come out on every night uh, towards the end of the season and say, uh, who doesn't want to play tonight? <laughs> And a lot of the veterans would say, you know what, I could use the time off. So, you know, they do the obligatory go in for a few minutes and then it's out the rest of the game. Um, I think a coach knows his team well, and certainly with veterans, and you got to rest those knees. With young guys still learn the playbook, you know, you got to let them work it out. So I think it's probably to the Lakers' advantage that they don't have to play right away. Uh, I'm sure your guys like LeBron and AD and, and some of the other veterans are smart enough to have stayed in shape and have not turned into – uh, Sean Kemp uh, over the course of the off season. Um, but I don't know. It is what it is. And, uh, you know, we don't have to deal with Shaq playing his way into shape this year like we did back in the early 2000s. I, you know, I think I, I agree with you. I think with the NBA, because they, they had a good chunk of their season uh, under their belts. And, and really, there's just a, a certain amount of ramp up time they need to get get the legs going, get the feet going and everything. And the, and the Lakers are in such a good spot anyway, uh, record-wise. It's not as big a factor. I think in the NFL, which has not even started yet, um, I, I agree with Coach Tomlin. I, I think that um, the teams that get started early, whether it's in Texas or Florida, uh, I think that's a distinct advantage for those teams because, as you, you know, with football, the, uh, you know, the offenses are so much more complicated. Right. Some teams are, you know – uh, bringing in new coordinators, which means new playbooks. Uh, and, and I think they need every practice day that they can get. Yeah, again, when it comes to the NFL, I just feel like I'm playing with house money right now. I mean, <laughs> having won a championship, I'm just uh, – I'm as relaxed as can be. So, uh, you know what, if they know what they know, it, that's great. But uh, Patrick Mahomes is good enough for us. Yeah, that's about all you need, I guess. Um, <laughs> that's exactly right. You ready to move on to pop culture? Let's do it. I love this one today. This is a lot of fun. We, you know, I, I've, uh, there have been some stories that have popped up, some interviews with some uh, great stars who've talked about the roles that they passed up. Uh, very often you'll hear, or every so often you'll hear about a, an actor who may have been passed up for a role, but then some actors have made the decision to pass on a film. And we thought it'd be fun to talk about some of those. And uh, some of these I've been able to verify just through interviews that I've done with some of these people which I found fascinating, but let me just give you an example. Uh, roles that were that were passed on. Here's a good one for you. Uh, apparently, according to, these are according to, to Men's Health uh, com, Men's Health Magazine, that Jack Nicholson was being considered for the role of Michael Corleone in The Godfather. Okay, so Michael, not the Don, right? Correct. Not Vito. Because he was wow. younger okay. when he came out, of course. He would have been younger. That's right. Well, he would have certainly done that well. But, you know, I mean, how, it's hard now because Michael is so associated with the role. It's hard to take him out of that. I think they'd even talked about Robert Redford in that role at one point and kind of go with an Irish mob kind of feel. But, but it didn't work. And then they talked about 
um, the guy who played Sonny. Can't think of his name. Uh, James. Sonny was uh, G- Jim Conn, wasn't he? James Conn. James Conn. That's right. Yeah. Uh, about him having that role. But anyway, uh, Jack Nicholson. I mean, Jack Nicholson would have been great in anything. So. Okay, Nicholson, great actor, but can you imagine anybody but Al Pacino? No, that's the thing. I can't. Uh, hey, I just can't. Here's one for you. John Travolta uh, was considered for the role of Forrest Gump. <laughs> wow. You find that funny, I think. I do find that funny just because, I mean, Travolta is a little bit of a, of a punchline, you know? I mean, other than Pulp Fiction... Um, he hasn't had that many great roles. I mean, I guess Saturday Night Fever, uh, Grease, but for him to be considered in that kind of role, which is rather iconic, I, yeah. I kind of think Tom Hanks made that, made that character. One of the great actors of our generation, of course. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know this. Will Smith was considered for the lead role in Matrix that, that we now think of Keanu Reeves playing. Yeah. Boy, that would have been great for his career. And obviously it was a game changer for, for Keanu Reeves. So interesting. Here's one, I, I, speaking of interesting, uh, the movie The Shining. We, we all are familiar yeah. with how scary that movie was and how amazing Jack Nicholson was in that movie. Apparently, Robin Williams was considered in that role. Well, would he have been, yeah, would he have been scary or would it have just been funny? So he has great dramatic chops. He won an Oscar. It was a Goodwill Hunting, I think, for Best Supporting Actor. It was, and he should have won for Awakenings, but you know, he, he lost out. When it comes to drama, he, he was wonderful, but we always think of the guy that's cutting loose all the time and being silly. Uh, so you could see where the split personality thing, I think would have worked with Robin Williams, but, but then again, you got to imagine the movie without Jack Nicholson, and that would be hard to do. Um, yeah, and I know the next one coming up, I think, but um, the, uh, uh, Robin Williams was supposed to be the Riddler. That's right. In, in Batman, the, the third one, I believe, uh, with ended up being Val Kilmer. Um, but it ended up being Jim Carrey, who was fine. In my opinion, Jim Carrey is a little over the top, but Robin Williams would have certainly made that interesting. He would have been great. Uh, now, one of the uh, also in one of those earlier Batman roles, John Lithgow was apparently being considered for the Joker part that, once again, Nicholson was involved in. Now, Nicholson, and he was wonderful. He was wonderful and the perfect you know, person for that role because it was kind of a, a little bit comic booky <laughs> at that time. Lithgow is so great, though. I saw him at a Laker game one time, just out there with the commoners like me, and and he's a tall guy. Uh, I was I was really surprised. I was kind of kind of struck by him. Uh, here's another one. Burt Reynolds was considered for James Bond. Uh, it, hmm. it, it, it was Live and Let Die, which was uh, eventually played by Roger Moore, but yeah. apparently that would Burt Reynolds was being considered for that. Wow, he have been a good James Bond, don't you think? <sighs> I don't, I, have you heard Reynolds ever do an accent? I don't know that I've, because I think you have, I think that has to be, it's got to be a British role, right? It's MI6, it's... Uh, yeah, he has to be British, you're right. I don't know. I loved Burt Reynolds, but I don't know about that. Um, here's one that I think was uh, was interesting. Well, let me, I'll, I'll keep uh, Christina uh, Applegate from Married with Children mm. was considered to play the, the lead in uh, Legally Blonde, which later went to Reese. Witherspoon. Yeah, that really launched Reese Witherspoon's career. Um, now, Christina Applegate has gone on to do great things uh, uh, in other films, but yeah, that would have been that would have been pretty interesting. She's she's very talented, but uh, mm-hmm. again, that's one you have to imagine. Now, here's one I actually discovered this while doing. I confirmed it. I was doing an interview with Tom Selleck one day, and I I read something as like one line somewhere on the internet and. And my advice to people is be careful what you, what you believe when you read the internet. I, you think we would know this by now, but we don't. Uh, so when I did my research on Tom, I thought, right, I'm gonna, I gotta run this by him at some point during the interview. I, I don't know how this could go back. This could really blow up in my face. And I said, Tom, uh, true or false, you were being considered for the lead in Indiana Jones. And he said, it true. Tom Selleck wow. was offered the role of uh, Indiana Jones. And he had to turn it down because of his work on Magnum P.I. Well, he would have been great. I think he's a fantastic actor, um, which I, I love the fact that you started with a sentence that I've never said when I was interviewing Tom Selleck. 
Uh, that's that's awesome. No, I, I did, it's, apologize for name dropping like that. No, I mean if but it's I, true, it's not name dropping. I pointed out because even though I've I researched these uh, roles uh, as well, you have to be careful what you take as being truth, and so you really have to do your homework and 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 look for other sources to to see some of this. And in the case of that one, it was just an opportunity where I had a chance to actually ask him directly and he couldn't do it because of magnum pi but then think about it how would that yeah. character be without harrison ford I, I well what would, what would harrison well of course harrison still had uh you know star wars to fall back sure. on but uh <laughs> yeah you can't think of it of indiana jones without uh here's one too that i heard from uh, stallone's mouth but i wasn't interviewing him this was an interview i saw of sylvester stallone this week he was uh, interviewed for, uh, he was uh, offered the role of die hard don't you think, though, if that would have happened, that would have been more of a, uh, I don't know, almost, um, well, kind of like uh, Stallone's other movies that were action-packed. Yeah. They were kind of tongue-in-cheek. Die Hard had that feel of an every man kind of stuck in that tower like uh, Bruce Willis was. And, and gritty, and it was uh, uh, heavier. Uh, I think you're right with Stallone. It could have been a little uh, more campy. Uh, and so, uh, again, you can't imagine that part uh, with anybody but Bruce Willis, and that, of course, was his breakout uh, performance. Here's one I had no idea, never heard this before, was uh, Pacino was apparently uh, offered the role of Han Solo in Star Wars, but he didn't understand the script. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so that was... Uh... Okay, so The Godfather would have already been out by then, right? Because that came out in 71. Yeah, that was late 70s was uh, Star Wars. Was, was, yeah, Star Wars was 77 or so. Yeah, that, yeah. boy, that would have been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Again, Harrison Ford won out. And then the uh, last one I have on here is uh, Johnny Depp was apparently considered to play uh, Ferris Bueller in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That eventually uh, went to uh, Matthew Broderick. Yeah, uh, that's interesting because Johnny Depp is in that movie. Um, no, I'm sorry, not Johnny Depp. Charlie Sheen is in that movie. He's in the uh, uh, the police uh, uh, the police station uh, talking to Ferris's sister. Johnny Depp reminded me of him. Anyway. So roles that they passed on. I, I just always love uh, that kind of yeah. Uh, you ready to move on to Faith? Let's do it. Can I tell you, I uh, this may be. I don't know how often you'll hear this, but uh, one of the, this last Sunday, last two Sundays, were parts of the reason I'm so proud of, of my church. Um, and that is that uh, there's a little, sometimes there's a little out of the box thinking, uh, a little uh, kind of swaying up from tradition a little bit and doing things that, that are fun, but sometimes a little risky. You know, two weeks ago, uh, there was a, a real life church did, uh, you may not know this, but <laughs> Real Life Church did, did a great little bit with, uh, with uh, Nathan Cress, uh, who is, um, plays Freddie and uh, played Freddie and I, Carly. So mm -hmm. that was kind of a neat treat. treat. But last week, uh, I was just, I had to do a double take and loved it so much. There was a parody on uh, one of Billie Eilish's songs. And it was a <laughs> Mother's Day parody. And it was just brilliant. It was just superb and wonderful and beautiful and my wife got such a kick out of it and i gave me goosebumps i thought this is cool what a what a cool church i go to now if you're a traditionalist ah, i don't know how that goes over but for me we just really loved uh the, the last two weekends a lot well thank you uh we don't uh, we don't often play well with the traditionalists uh to be honest with you i did not know that was a billy eilish song until somebody had to explain it to me so i'm impressed that you knew that um I think that your 15 year olds probably had something to do with that, but then the, the worship team, the tech team um, did such an amazing job. I mean, you have that really fun kind of culturally relevant moment at the beginning with the Billie Eilish parody. And then you end it with that, uh, you know, choir of moms singing that blessing over their families. And it just really goes uh, full scale with the, the whole experience of the of the service and, and man they just did a bang up job i was so proud of them and the the meat and the cheese if you will of, of the sandwich uh, of course is the message which was um, uh, the last uh, several weeks has been like the ones you love uh, yeah. talking about no trust rely commit and then eventually touch and uh, this last weekend we were on commit 
Yeah, so we talked about the idea of committing to people in our lives and, and making those kind of promises to one another and understanding what that means. And, and I, I just, I encourage everybody, if you have not seen last weekend's service, watch it. And I can say that um, because I had nothing to do with it. Um, all the participants were amazing and were moms and had such great perspective for us on Mother's Day. And um, uh, this next week, though, we get into the part five, like the ones you love. It's kind of a two-part message because we're talking about touch. And so uh, the first part is kind of the value of hugging your kids and your family members, um, kind of that principle of parenting. Of every kid needs a look, a word, and a touch every single day. Um, but then part two of the message is where you send the kids into the other room because we're going to talk about uh, sex, baby, uh, to talk about the the uh, salt and pepper song. So uh, anyway, that's uh, part two of the message. So that'll be a fun conversation we get to have as we wrap up this series. So it's been a lot of fun uh, on this series and had some fun special guests and, and uh, hopefully some more coming up. So it was a great, great time. Um, we, this is the time now where we like to uh, give a local shout out for, for some of our local businesses um, as we start to uh, hopefully come through the other side here shortly. Uh, of, uh, of our stay-at-home restrictions. It'll be time to get back to business and for some of our local businesses, uh, hopefully you will uh, be out there to, to, uh, to do business with them. And I'll let you start, Rusty. Yeah, you know, I think in the past what we've done is we've promoted a business. I wanna take the time, to, just a bit of time to promote a couple of people. Uh, here's what I mean by that. Sometimes these big stores, they've stayed open because they're essential and because they're, you know, financed by larger organizations or, uh, you know, the chain itself but it's the people that really make it special. Uh, one in particular is uh, the Vons on the corner of Bouquet and um, Golden Valley, uh, that stretch right there, Newhall Ranch Road. Um, inside that Vons is an individual by the name of Todd. Todd works as a cashier and he's always there. Um, I'm pretty sure he's the only one that has a key to the building because uh, he's always there uh, and he's always friendly. He's always nice, always engaging. If you see Todd, uh, give him an extra special high. And the other one is Lowe's, around the other corner uh, of Bouquet and Newhall Ranch. Uh, there's a big box store that it's easy to get in there and get lost or overwhelmed and think, I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't even know how to find this. If you're like me, you've had many of those conversations with people where you go, I need that, you know, the thing in the jig that kind of, yeah. um, there's a guy in there by the name of Scott Parker um, he is phenomenal and he, he'll just take all the time in the world for you. He's a great guy and uh, happens to be a member of real life. And so I've known him for a long time, uh, but just a couple of real quality individuals at uh, two great organizations. I love that. And when you go to Lowe's and you buy some electrical equipment or you need to add something to your home that uh, involves electricity, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to Castle Rock Electric. Uh, ben over there at Castle Rock has been um, taking care of our home for a long, long time. Uh, when it just comes to just electrical needs, ceiling fans, uh, light switches, um, you know, moving electrical yeah. around and that sort of thing. Uh, and so uh, he's, uh, he's the guy to go to, Castle Rock Electric, and uh, that has been over there. Um, before we say goodbye, Rusty, I, I want to mention that um, uh, my knowledge of uh, Billy uh, Eilish really uh, extends to, like you said, my children. With daughter number two, I always referred to Billy Eilish as Billy Eilash. Which, uh, which would bother, which would create some pretty uh, looks on the part of my, my 15 year old daughter, number two. I, I have done that as well. And I also, when I first heard her name, I thought my kids were mispronouncing Billy Idol. And I thought, you know, with the, the rebel yell and everything, I thought, come on, kids, it's Billy Idol. No, dad, it's Billy Eilish. So, Billy Eilish, not what do, Eilish, what what do I know? Uh, for those folks who are following you already, uh, but maybe there are some new people that have, have come on board. Uh, if they want to learn anything more about you or Real Life Church, they can do that at uh, PastorRustyGeorge.com. Rusty yep. And for Rick, you can find him every Friday afternoon from 1 to 3 on KHTS, your hometown station. There's an app you can download, 1220 AM, 98.1 FM. And uh, any exciting guests coming up this coming Friday? You know, nothing uh, lined up yet. I usually start my, uh, my phone calls on Monday and uh, okay. we can, we can uh, line up uh, this weekend and we, we try to get uh, either an athlete, uh, former or current, 
uh, or uh, or an actor if we can to to try to make an appearance on the show. And then very often we'll have some local uh, city officials too that kind of give us an update on what's happening with our stay at home restrictions and the coronavirus as well. So uh, yeah. it's a one stop shop if you want to join us. Yes, it is. Awesome, Rick. Well, thanks so much, buddy. Thank you. It's great to talk to you. We'll do it again next week. All right. Sounds good.